Good afternoon, and welcome to uh, Budget Subcommittee on uh, State Administration's hearing today, uh, May 23. I had to check my calendar. Um, first up is going to be, we're going to go ahead and start the committee as a subcommittee, and first up is going to be uh, Department of Consumer Affairs, uh, Bureau of Medical Marijuana, and uh, the, their trailer bill language. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair. Brennan Murphy with the Department of Finance. And uh, first, I'd like to say thank you for your understanding that I couldn't be in two places at once last week. I appreciate that. And I apologize for uh, not being able to get back here sooner. Um, so what I'd like to do is give you kind of a, a, a quick um, but broad overview of the trailer bill language uh, associated with the Medical Marijuana Regulation Act and um, essentially go over kind of the, the highlights for you. So the, as it says in your background, uh, you know, the, the broad piece here is AB 243, uh, 266, and SB 643 were all passed and signed by the governor last year. Um, and they detail out essentially many of the duties that need to happen broadly um, to regulate medical marijuana in the state of California by January 1, 2018. What we have proposed in this trailer bill is um, effectuation uh, to make that regulation happen. Uh, it does happen in many areas, uh, many levels. Uh, the biggest piece uh, being um, essentially rules as, as far as um, some of the public health regulation of laboratories, um, which will eventually move to the Department of Consumer Affairs, and um, things that we have to do in relation to regulating the water piece uh, for growers. And in that, what we've done is put a comprehensive uh, list together, which I believe will uh, probably be amended uh, one more time before we're uh, completely done. Um, but we really have tried to survey the three uh, main departments in the regulatory scheme. So that is the Department of Public Health, the California Department of Food and Agriculture, and the Department of Consumer Affairs, the Bureau of Medical Marijuana uh, Regulation which will have a name change in it and become the Bureau of Medical Cannabis Regulation. Um, I don't know that I like that acronym as much, but it, it may play. <laughs> uh, me too, I was, just, I was just really getting good at it. So the, um, the, the, the piece here is that you know, we've really put our heads together. We've been, as an administration, running very hard to try and make sure we have a plan that gets us to success in what is now essentially 20 months from today. Um, there are a couple major information technology components, both at the um, Department of Food and Agriculture and at the Department of Consumer Affairs, and, and those are uh, some of that is specifically outlined in the trailer bill. The biggest uh, of which, though, is it really this is cleanup and effectuation of what we've already decided on. Um, there are, are not major long-term policy shifts. Even the policies that do change are in relation to medical marijuana. This trailer bill is not effectuating any great change in water or anything else beyond the world of medical marijuana. And with that, I'll be happy to take any questions. Okay, LAO. Helen Kirstein with the Legislative Analyst's Office. We've raised uh, about five sort of major areas of questions for the legislature to consider as it reviews this trailer bill language. We do note just overall that we do think there are a number of policy and programmatic issues that are brought up with this language. So we think it's important for the legislature to review the language and ensure that it's consistent with legislative priorities and with the legislature's goals for implementing uh, the Medical Marijuana Regulation and Safety Act. Um, and the five specific uh, areas where we've uh, suggested that the legislature may uh, wish to ask questions are, are as follows. First, the legislature may wish to ask whether the administration has provided a clear rationale for the proposed changes to MRSA. For example, why does the administration propose different requirements and enforcement procedures for cannabis-related water diversions rather than relying on existing water law? 
And also, uh, there's, as you heard, a move, a shift uh, from the Department of Public Health to the Department of Consumer Affairs uh, with regard to licensing laboratories. And so the legislature could consider asking which department might uh, be better positioned to regulate those laboratories based on their experience. So second, the legislature may wish to ask uh, whether there are possible budgetary or policy impacts associated with these proposed changes. For example, we note that, that there is that shift uh, from the Department of Public Health to the Department of Consumer Affairs, and that could potentially have some budgetary impacts um, in terms of positions to fund those activities. Third, the legislature may wish to ask what provisions uh, included in this trailer bill language really need to happen right now as part of the budget process versus potentially being able to happen through a policy process or another process that might provide a little bit more time uh, for deliberation. Uh, fourth, the legislature could ask how these proposed changes might interact with uh, a ballot initiative that's likely to be on the November ballot. Uh, we would note, for example, once again, with, related to that shift uh, in the, la the laboratory uh, testing facilities, that uh, the initiative actually envisions the Department of Public Health having that role, not the Department of Consumer Affairs. So if that shift happens then uh, and then the initiative passes, then there might be a conflict between uh, what the initiative says and, and what the state's currently doing. And then uh, finally, lastly, uh, the legislature may wish to ask uh, if there are any potential drafting issues, for example, if the, if the, um, the pieces of code are in the appropriate uh, statutes, for example, there, we noted that there are some water-related uh, code uh, changes, and those are included in the business and professions code rather than in the water code. So those were the major areas that we thought the legislature may wish to ask some questions of the administration uh, to make sure that the legislature is comfortable. Okay, so why don't we do that? Why don't I give you a couple of minutes to get prepared to respond to all of those questions? And, um, and in that time, we'll go ahead and establish quorum and take a couple of votes. Nazarian? Present. Allen? Here. Cooper? Here. Mullen? Wilk? Present. Quorum is present. Okay. So let's take up the uh, vote only calendar on the. Uh, Agenda part one, there are 18 items, and we're going to pull items number one and number 18 and number 16. Are we pulling 10? No. 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 So one, 16, and 18. Um, is there a motion? Seven moves. Second. Okay, so we're voting for everything except for 116 and 18 from uh, Agenda Part 1. All right, Nazarian? Aye. Allen? Aye. Cooper? Aye. Mullen? Wilk? Aye. Okay. And then on the remaining items? Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Nazarian? Hi. Allen. Items 1, 16, and 18. Cooper. Aye. Mullen. Wilk. No. Okay. That item will be, well, both items will be open until Mr. We have a full vote. Take up uh, agenda number two or no? Yeah. yeah. All right. Okay, let's continue. All right. You had a, quite a few questions. <laughs> <laughs> Going to take them all one by one in 12-part harmony. <laughs> um, so I think the first, the, the, and I'm going to take them just in kind of broad groups. The, the first was um, the concern is the clear rationale. So the, the reality is, you know, we, we worked a lot on these bills at the end of session last year. And we made the best uh, moves forward that we could. Uh, um, by both uh, all the staff over here as well as in the administration. And we knew at the end of that that we had to look for how we're going to implement and, w and what's going to happen. And the the second crux of this is that, that the implementation was going to be, I mean, even from when we signed the bills, is 27 months away. 
So to move quickly, uh, to be nimble, um, we have started running through all of the pieces that these departments need to create the regulation and move it forward. And, and in that, you know, so the, the rationale for this becomes um, when we have trailer bill changes that effectuate how we're going to regulate in the industry, we have to get them out there and put them uh, as quickly as possible to everybody, uh, including yourselves. So that's the rationale for, for why we're making the changes. Bottom line is the majority of these changes are very technical in nature and, and they're really cleaning up what we're original drafting um, with the exception of, of a couple things. Impacts of changes. Um, the broad impacts of, of most of these changes that I said are very much a technical nature. The few that are exceptions, um, the laboratory testing being moved from the Department of Public Health uh, long term to the Department of Consumer Affairs. The way that we're envisioning this uh, right now is the Department of Public Health and DCA in concert will actually hire the employees uh, this year. It's in the budget uh, for 16-17. And in the long term, those positions will then transfer to the Department of Consumer Affairs. The reason being uh, that in the long term, Consumer Affairs really is probably, it will be in a better position to long term license and regulate the laboratories for the testing environment of, of, mar of medical marijuana. However, uh, public health is going to be integral, integral in starting that process and making sure that the right regulations are put in place. So that's why both departments are moving together at the start and it will transfer to DCA in the long run. Uh, it is noted that it's different than the initiative, uh, but I I'll be honest, the initiative hasn't passed yet and if it does pass, we intend to still uh, uh, have this housed at DCA in the long run because we think that makes the most sense for long-term regulation process. Uh, urgency of proposed changes. The biggest urgency of proposed changes is to get this thing up and running by January 1, 2018. So, uh, you know, as of January 1, 2018, we're expected to have a regulatory capability in this state across all the departments <clears throat> to begin regulating all facets in what are essentially tight house uh, like laws for medical marijuana. The only way to do that is to be nimble, be light, and move as fast as we can. Um, we have an entire implementation team that has set about information technology. Um, we're, we're looking at processes and we're getting regulations out as quickly as possible. Um, all of those things take time, but a as you've seen in both uh, the current year budget uh, proposal that, that we had the authority to do in the bills and next year's budget proposal, these departments are, are moving at as fast as they can, as cautious and as thoughtful as they can to make this happen. Um, I mentioned the relationship to the initiative and, and I'm going to leave it at that uh, for, this, for this piece. Um, Drafting issues. So the question on drafting issues is actually done very specifically because as I mentioned earlier, all of these things relate to medical marijuana. Uh, we're not intending to change water policy or anything else across the board. Since they relate to medical marijuana and what we're effectuating in the regulations related to medical marijuana, we have intentionally placed these provisions in the Business and Professions Code. Um, that was done intentionally and, and is a second factor in the limiting of what the, the proposed trailer bill would do. Um, I think that hits uh, most of the high points, sir. Okay, any uh, public comments on this? Any comments from uh, the members? All right. So is there a... Um, So is there a motion to uh, approve the funding and positions from the January BCP and adopt the trailer bill language as placeholder language? <clears throat> so moved. Second. Nazarian? Aye. Allen? No. Cooper? No. Mullen? Aye. Well, okay. Moving on to issue number two. Yes. Yes. Good afternoon. 
I will present the May revision proposal. Uh, the Department of Consumer Affairs respectfully requests $6 million in fiscal year 2016-17, $6.5 million in 2017-18, $1 million in 2018-19, and $803,000 ongoing. This proposal would be used to fund eight positions and contract costs for the development, implementation, and maintenance of an information technology system for the Bureau of Medical Marijuana Regulation. This system will be used for licensing and enforcement of applicants under the Bureau's jurisdiction in the Medical Marijuana Regulation and Safety Act. This funding is critical to meet our goal of accepting license applications by January 1st, 2018. We respectfully request your approval and here to answer any questions you may have. Helen Kirstein with the Legislative Analyst Office. Uh, as you heard, current law necessitates the Bureau implement an IT system no later than January 2018. So as part of that, um, trying to meet that goal, they proposed an expedited approach rather than the more typical stage gate approach. And so as part of that, they're actually requesting all of the estimated funding for the project up front. Uh, rather than waiting until the project is more fully formed and they have more refined cost estimates. So at this time, they're still trying to figure out, for example, what type of IT solution they're going to want, whether they're going to add on to the Breeze system or whether they're going to go another direction. And so there's some uncertainty about that solution and, and the associated costs. Uh, so while we recognize that an, that an expedited approach may well be necessary given the very short time frame that the Bureau is under, we do think that this approach raises some project risks and actually increases the need for legislative oversight. However, we think that the administration's approach actually reduces legislative oversight because by essentially asking you to appropriate all of the funds up front, and then they also have some control section language, which I believe you are, have considered um, separately, but the administration wouldn't have to return to the, to the legislature necessarily to ask for more funding through the budget process. And we think this is a concern because we think the budget process is a really important opportunity for the legislature to conduct that kind of oversight and ensure that they're holding uh, the administration accountable uh, for these types of IT projects. And so we have um, a proposal for a revised approach, and that approach would provide the funding for the administration uh, for 16-17. And then for future years, uh, th we'd ask the administration to return uh, if and when they need additional funding for the project, uh, for the IT services component of the project. And we're also recommending that uh, the legislature direct the, the Bureau uh, to provide regular updates to legislative staff. We think this is important just so staff are kept aware of the kinds of decisions that are going to be made about the project, uh, it's um, what approach they're going to take, cost estimates as they're refined, those types of things. Finance? Jeff Wiener, Department of Finance. <clears throat> we support the administration proposal. Okay. Any public comments? Any questions from the committee? Is there a motion to approve as budgeted? Second. Nazarian? Aye. Allen? No. Cooper? No. Mullen? Aye. Wilk? No. Okay. Last item a spring finance letter. Good afternoon, Joanne Wenzel with the Bureau for Private Post-Secondary Education. The Bureau for Private Post-Secondary Education requests to transfer expenditure authority of $183,000 and two positions related to the administration of STRIF claims from the Bureau's admin fund to the STRIF fund. I'm happy to respond to any questions. LAO? We have nothing to add. Okay. Finance? We support the proposal as is. All right. We, subcommittee, received a letter from Mr. Medina um, 
which outlined a alternative path, which I believe all the members have also seen. And I thought I was in complete agreement because it utilized uh, some of the uh, special funds for the purposes of outreach. So I, I uh, agreed with that approach. And so what I would ask is if the committee would uh, consider rejecting the spring finance letter uh, and instead proposing the 1.3 million in the STRF funds to support additional outreach and services to students upon school closures. So moved. Second. Okay. Nazarian. Aye. Allen. Aye. Cooper. Aye. Mullen. Aye. Wilk. Aye. Okay. Thank you. We'll do a vote only calendar now. So two, two parts. Uh, first one was all of the items with the exception of one, 16 and 18, and the second vote on just those three uh, items. On one, 16 and 18, the chair is asking for an aye. So, um, for items 1, 16, and 18, Mullen? Aye. Okay, and then the remaining items, chair is asking for an aye as well. Mullen? Aye. Okay. Okay, let's uh, open the roll again on uh, issue number three, spring finance letter. Allen? So on issue one, Mr. Wilk from not voting to no. Yes. Okay. So moving on to issue number four, spring finance letter for administrative support services, Department of Veterans Affairs. Mr. Chair and Assembly Members. Uh, my name is Patty Ingram and I'm the Budget Officer for the California Department of Veterans Affairs. And I'm here today to present to you our Spring Finance Letter for Administrative Support Services. And it's a request for $1,746,000 of which $1,643,000 is general fund and $103,000 is our, from our Farm and Home Building Fund of 1943. And this is to fund 15 currently authorized but unfunded positions. Um, to support the rapid growth in the department um, from opening five homes since 2010. And this would be in our areas of our information services division, our contracts unit, our human resources division, our legal division um, for a reasonable accommodation and also for um, payroll based journal entries, which is, uh, or journals, excuse me, which is for um, a new um, centers for Medicare and Medicaid services requirement effective July 1st, 2016. Thank you. LAO, no? Finance? Ileana Ramos with the Department of Finance. We have no concerns with the proposed resources. Okay. Any questions from the committee? Any public comments? Uh, recommendation is to approve the, not only to approve the spring finance letter, uh, but also add 202, uh, 402,000 for two additional attorney three positions to provide additional regulatory support to the homes and veteran services divisions. So with that, so is, 
Thank you. Second. Thank you. Nazarian? Aye. Allen? Aye. Cooper? Mullen? Aye. Wilk? Aye. Thank you so much. Thank you. Last but not least, on agenda one, issue number five, spring finance letter for Cal Access Replacement Project. Chris Reynolds with the Secretary of State's Office. I'm the Chief of the Political Reform Division. The Secretary of State had submitted a spring finance letter requesting $757,000 to complete stage two of the project um, approval life cycle for the Cal Access Replacement Project. We note sta the staff's recommendation, which we support, that would provide continuous funding, which would enable us to complete through stage three of the project approval life cycle up to issuing a request for proposal and we anticipate we could complete that uh, stage three as early as April or May of 2017 with this additional funding. LAO, Finance. Tamara Johnson, Department of Finance. We continue to support the administration's proposal for 757,000 one-time funding to procure contracted services support for stage two. Okay, I know this is something near and dear to the heart of one of my members. Would you like to make any comments? Uh, I would, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much uh, for the opportunity. I want to thank you in particular, Mr. Chair, and your staff for working with Senator Hertzberg and I uh, on this issue, as well as the Secretary of State, of course, uh, on this item. The $1 million augmentation uh, contained in the item, uh, the uh, addition to the regular uh, or original proposal, rather, uh, will help the Secretary of State deliver this much needed project six months sooner than uh, what would have otherwise been the case. So I believe this is uh, money well spent. Appreciate uh, uh, everyone involved in helping make this happen. With that, would you like to make a motion to approve the spring finance letter with an additional one million for the purposes uh, specified in the uh, staff comments? So moved. Second. Great. Nazarian? Aye. Allen? Aye. Cooper? Mullen? Aye. Wilk? Aye. Has four. Thank you. Thank you. So we move to uh, the agenda part two. This is a vote only item, uh, but I do believe there are a few items that have been pulled, if I'm not mistaken. Three. Three items, okay, which are? Uh, four, seven, and 12. Four, seven, and 12. So is there a motion to approve items one through 12 minus Move. four, seven, and 12? So moved. Second. Thank you. Nazarian? Aye. Allen? Aye. Cooper? Mullen? Aye. Wilk? Aye. Has four. Great. Now a motion on uh, uh, um, items uh, four, seven, and twelve. Actually, can we can we split it? Um, you do four and twelve together, and seven separately. Of course. So, a motion on four and twelve. Second. Nazarian. Aye. Allen. No. Cooper. Mullen. Aye. Wilk. <laughs> no. Okay. It's the other one. I'm a no on. Yeah. Has two. Now item uh, seven. So moved. Nazarian? Aye. Allen? No. Cooper? Mullen? Aye. Wilk? Aye. Has three. Okay. okay. We are on uh, agenda part two. Uh, vote only calendar items. Um, we split it into three votes. Uh, items 1 through 12 <laughs> minus 4, 7, and 12. Currently it is a 4-0 uh, vote. Mr. Cooper? Has okay. five. Second vote was issues, uh, issue items 4 and 12, and I believe it's a 2-2 two -two vote. 
Mr. Cooper. Two to vote. Thank you. Has and three. Last item was uh, issue number seven, standalone. Uh, it's a uh, three to one vote. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Thank you. Has four. And with that, we are done. Meeting adjourned.